Hi, my name is Palabo. While I'm working on the next season, I'm going to be sharing some flashback episodes of some of my favorite places around the world. This episode is from Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates and was recorded in September 2016. Enjoy. My name is Palabo. I'm the Radio Vagabond and I'm traveling the world. I just arrived to Abu Dhabi in the UAE. And I've been through immigration, so I got the stamp in my passport, and I just stepped outside. And even though it's only 6.30 in the morning, my glasses steamed up when I walked out the door. I think it might get even hotter here. This time I'm not staying at an Airbnb or a hostel. I am staying at a five-star luxury hotel. Yeah, I got a good rate on it, and I thought, well, why not try that? I'm going to be here in Abu Dhabi for six days and then off to Dubai. Right now, I'm standing in line waiting for a taxi. With around 33 countries already visited before I started my world journey on the 5th of July this year, I had a very detailed plan on where to go when and in which order and to start out by visiting all the countries in the eastern part of Europe first. But that soon changed. The first three countries was, as I planned, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. But from there, all plans were off. I went to Moldova, Romania, Bulgaria, Macedonia, Serbia, Hungary and Slovakia. And even though there are still many countries in that part of the world that I have yet to see, I decided to change directions and to come back and do them later. I'm still going to visit every single country in the world. I'm only changing the order in which I do so. So this is my first big jump. Before heading to Southeast Asia, I plan to spend two weeks in the United Arab Emirates and first in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is the capital of the Emirates and by far the biggest and the richest of the seven Emirates. The city itself is smaller than Dubai, but they have the most oil here and therefore the most money, even though you can't really call Dubai poor. I met my fellow Dane, Peter Falk. Don't do any Colombo jokes. Just one more thing. He's heard them all. And he's one of the many non-Emirates who lives and works here in the UAE. In fact, 80% of the people living in the Emirates are expats. Only 20% are locals. Peter moved here five years ago and agreed to take me for a drive around the city to tell me more about what kind of place this is. Peter, we are now in, in your car about to take a, a, a ride around the Abu Dhabi area. Uh, this is the capital of, of the Emirates, uh, but what is the difference between Abu Dhabi and, and Dubai? Um, the, the United Arab Emirates consists of seven Emirates, and Abu Dhabi is the biggest, and also it's where the federal government um, resides in, in uh, Abu Dhabi. So each Emirates have their own government, and then the federal government as well. So. Um, so here in Abu Dhabi, can, can you compare that to, like, the United States? Yeah, yeah, very much indeed. You know, number plates are different on cars. Uh, um, rules are different in terms of um, sometimes visa rules are slightly different. Um, yeah, so so you you can compare. The, you know, they have the same currency, but they have a lot of like local uh, rules. But, but even though Abu Dhabi is the richest place, it's always Dubai that we're, we're talking about. They, they build the most, even though they build a lot here, but they, they're more like <clears throat> uh, going crazy in Dubai. I think, I think uh, it, 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 um, it's, it with regard to, as you say, Abu Dhabi is a much richer, has more or less all the oil. So Dubai was forced to, at the very earlier stage, to try to find and create commerce not just based on oil and that's why we've seen uh, uh, quite a big growth in, 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 in the Dubai economy much earlier than, than they did in, in, in Abu Dhabi in terms of um, inviting you know expats to come and work 
and also because it was the federal um, government as well. So there hadn't been the same. Abu Dhabi is more government work, whereas in Dubai there's much more private enterprise. Mm -hmm. And when they were building uh, the Burj Khalifa, uh, it was in the beginning it was Burj Dubai, but uh, they ran out of money. I hear. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that was what happened. I mean, it was the beginning of the of the financial uh, crisis, and yes, Dubai. I guess you can say they they ran out of money, and then Abu Dhabi was, um, I, yeah, kind enough or <laughs> felt obliged to to help them out, and in in um, exchange for that, they renamed. Burj Dubai, Burj Khalifa. Yeah, because uh, Khalifa is the head of uh, of the, the the country. Yeah, Sheikh, Sheikh Khalifa is is the um, the ruler of Abu Dhabi and the president of uh, the UAE. Mm -hmm. And I hear that uh, he's uh, is he on life support at the moment. I mean, I, I don't know. Mm. It, it's he's it's very rare you see him in public. He has been very ill. Uh, in the past, so um, uh, he. But he's a very beloved figure. I mean, the the the, uh, the ruling family um, is, uh, I would say, very liked by by uh, by um, everybody here because if now when you see how Abu Dhabi and Dubai has evolved, um, they they invest a lot of their money in making sure that the infrastructure works. You know, people, schools, hospitals. The living standard is re relatively high, not just for 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 rich people, but for for um, almost everybody. There's, it's quite secure to to live around here. And his story is uh, quite unique as well. I I saw some pictures of uh, the place he grew up, if, even though that was uh, it was it was okay, but it, it was, his living standards uh, has gone from. Almost nothing to, yeah. You can't even imagine it. No, but but again, the, the the when in the 50s, 60s, in in the Emirates here, the the people were living very very uh, um, simple. Uh, it's only in the last 20, 30, 40 years we've seen buildings c come across like we see now here. Um, now this is part of the old town that we're going through, mm -hmm. and this is only. 30 years old, 20 years old, and it looks like it's been here for a long time. But so yes, in, initially they, they were living like Bedouins. They were living in tents. They were having their they built forts. There's a very famous fort here in in, in, in town here. They're they're kind of rebuilding. Um, so yeah, no, that it was a very simple life at the time uh, with all where they didn't have all the modern conveniences that we see today so it's a big a huge change and I met people living here for 20 30 years and it's an extraordinary story when they tell how you know things were probably 50 hundred years behind the 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 rest of the world yeah. and you say this is the old t uh, town that yeah and, and the, the reason I'm driving through is that you can see all the, all the small shops all kinds of stuff. And this is and, and here you can get a lot of things for a bargain, there are small cafes and and um, yeah. So this is a whole totally different commerce you see here compared with this, the the uh, big malls, the huge shopping malls. How many malls are there? And I think uh, I, 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 I stopped never... counting, but I guess in Abu Dhabi, you, you, I don't know, maybe 20 or so. Yeah. If that, I mean, I I stopped counting long time ago. But I just to check, I just wanted to show you this just to see the, the contrast. Yeah before we go out on our trip around. And you say if, if, if a, a few years ago there was a rule that uh, buildings were only to be 20 floors. Yes, uh, when, when Sheikh Syed uh, lived, the, the father of the nation, he was instrumental in creating the UAE together with the other seven, um, it was actually six emirates to begin with, then uh, I think it was Ashman that came in a year, year after. Um, so um, he he said in Abu Dhabi, the building uh, laws allowed only 20 floors. But after his death, uh, his, his that son changed. his son <laughs> uh, changed that. Yes. So, uh, but it's, it's still compared with Dubai, uh, it's it's not as as we don't see as many 
high rises or skyscrapers as as in Dubai. Yeah. And you live on the 40th floor. 42nd. 42nd floor. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Down here my my um, I have some Sri Lankan friends and they their favorite Sri Lankan takeaways down places like here. here you can find food stalls and you know where it doesn't cost it's very very cheap here. It's my first night here in Abu Dhabi and uh, I've just gone out to see the the city after the temperature uh, was sort of bearable to to walk around in and I I started out by going to one of these gigantic malls uh, that are here and what I see is I think that's what I'm going to see the next couple of weeks here in Abu Dhabi and Dubai a strange mixture of uh, what's typical arabic and what's very western like when i was inside this mall there was a, a food court with all the traditional uh, kfc burger king mcdonald's uh, pizza hut and a lot of others also a couple of local and i and i noticed that a lot of the women they wear scarves i even saw a few in in full burqa and the guys they wear traditional white outfit sort of a, a white dress without being a dress but but there was this young guy sitting and eating a, a burger from Burger King with a nicely trimmed beard and the white outfit and he wore a cap saying Los Angeles and I think that's pretty much what it's like here it's sort of a mixture between the typical Arabic and and something that's very westernized Uh, we're on the way to Yas Island. Uh, it was. It started out with they wanted to build a Formula One track. Yeah. Um, ba- yes. Basically, they wanted to get Abu Dhabi on the map of the world. So they decided some years back to try to get Formula One in, uh, racing here. And in order to do that, they had to build a Formula One race track, and that they did it in um, it was called Yas Island. And, uh, and together with that, they built a lot of other, you know, new residential areas, hotels, uh, Ferrari World, one of the biggest indoor amusement park. That's an in- indoor amusement park? Oh. Yes. And um, uh, 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 Water World, shopping center. Of course. Uh, of course, yeah. Ikea is in, on Yas Island. So, um, so yes, that, that's... Um, it's... Um, And now the residential part is being built as well, so uh, another area where people will move. Mm. And I'm amazed how much green, when we were in your apartment looking down, we saw a lot of uh, uh, green areas, but everywhere it's it's green and it's all growing in sand. Absolutely. Every, every um, Most of the green you see, whether being palm trees, you know, lawns, flower beds, all that kind of, it's all planted. And of course, it's it's a huge expense for the Emirates to to, um, to make sure the, uh, they're all watered every time, every day. The only thing that's actually, actually uh, real green is what you see now. These are the mangroves. Oh, uh, that's real. You see to, to the right and to your left. The mangrove plant is something that kind of grows in salt, salt water. I think it's one of I'm not really an expert, to be honest, but I think it's one of the few plants that, that actually can um, drink salt water. Mm. So all this you see right here now is actually um, the mangroves. But but the rest has they have to pump water up from the Gulf and and clean out the salt and yeah. and then desalination is a, a huge. Yeah. Every you know even drinking water is desalinated uh, seawater. Yeah. It's, it's, it requires a lot of energy. And um, yeah, I mean that that's that's a life condition here. If yeah. they didn't do that, it would be dry in two days. Yes. Yeah. When I'm driving to uh, uh, Dubai tomorrow, it's uh, around 180 kilometers, I think, or 140. Uh, uh, will I see green on the way, or is, am I going to be driving through desert? You're, there's a, <laughs> there used to be like 
when you drive on the highway there's no official border between the Emirates but of course there are signs saying you're not in Dubai but you didn't really know, need to see a sign you just where the trees stop that's Dubai starting <laughs> so, so they, they couldn't afford the same you know luxury of having all these so in, in Dubai you don't see the same amount but it's changing because Dubai is, is going to be hosting Expo 2020 yeah there's a massive investment going on now yeah and now trees are being planted along the highway because that's where the the a, a part of the Expo 2020 area is an area in the desert where they're building now just close to the Abu Dhabi border they're just building Legoland Bollywood uh, again I think the biggest now the biggest indoor amusement park IMG and and uh, and now they're also planting yeah. palm trees <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be huge it, it, it will be I mean I'm not an expert in, in, in the economy of scale for hosting an expo 2020 but they, they, they're definitely um, investing a lot of money in infrastructure in buildings residential a lot of stuff they're building a new it's, it's open now there's a new airport in Dubai it's going to be the biggest of them all um, yes so <laughs> they, they started the second palm uh, which they stopped during the financial crisis here, here, by the way here you see these buses yeah. there's a work camp right here and this is a work camp that has been built because of all the building they're going to do here on Yas Island um, the uh, Sadiat Lagoons, the Yes, uh, uh, something. So well, you'll see a lot of buses. Yeah, yeah. So here you'll see the the um, and they built that work camp only uh, a year ago. What kind of quality is it? Uh, is I, I I've never been there, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but as you can see here now, for example, there are a lot of trees. Those trees were not there uh, a year ago. So I, I mean. They're building trees for putting uh, putting trees for the, uh, yeah, for work, the camp, work so yeah. so it can't be that bad. No, sorry. But seriously, I think I think the conditions are good. I mean, I, I don't think it's not like a township in South Africa. Right? No, uh, no, no, no. I, th I think the the, 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 the the quality of the housing is good. Uh, I'm sure. I mean, again, I don't know really. No, no. <laughs> you live on the 42nd floor. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> No, but I mean, you know, you, t you talk with taxi drivers as well. Yeah. Uh, you can get a lot of information from talking to taxi drivers. They usually live in camps as well. Mm. They don't make a lot of money either, and they have to pay for their own accommodation. Um, yeah. And uh, they usually, I mean, they usually live in quarters, maybe six, seven, eight people together, uh, I guess. On the rooftop of this uh, hotel that I'm staying at uh, here in Abu Dhabi, uh, normally it's very quiet up here and uh, I'm almost the only one here. Uh, but today it's Friday, which means the Arabics have their day off. And it's full of families with kids and uh, having a good time up here. Wonderful to see. Now we're on Yas Island and we just passed the uh, Ferrari World and a huge roller coaster and uh, a big IKEA and now we're heading towards the Formula One track. Yes. So now Yas Island here, as I said before, has become quite a big area in terms of uh, recreation, hotels, shopping, with the with the Formula One racing uh, racing course as well. Uh, and again now they're starting building more residential areas villas townhouses uh, and so forth so again it's becoming more more activity here when I came five years ago it was very quiet but now it, it's really and and as you mentioned before when I came here first there's all these roads infrastructure and nothing's happening now you can see they did a good planning because of course now when everything starts being built you need all the roads and parking and uh, everything yeah. to support yeah we drove on a 10 lane uh, 
road before and uh, when that was built there was totally no need for it but now yeah now I mean you see the traffic and it's also for many is an easier way to go to Dubai to use that road as well than coming back from Dubai uh, rather than going through the whole Abu Dhabi island I just left the marina mall I went in there and I noticed uh, in, the, in the main square of this mall there was a, an elevator it was going one floor up maybe two floors up but I noticed that it could go further up then I decided to go into it and, and push the button that said R for roof and it just kept going and going and going and all of a sudden I was outside still could look out through the windows and uh, it kept going up and up and up to a cafe on top of a tower I don't know how far up I went 50 meters maybe 60 I'm not sure then I had a cup of coffee and uh, I went down again into this uh, this mall and that itself was a different experience all of a sudden I came up to a floor and up there there was a car dealership a Mercedes luxury car dealership inside the mall um, something I wasn't expecting to see and a lot of guys in traditional white emirate clothing and, and then I saw two guys walking hand in hand which is a bit more normal here and doesn't mean anything about being gay Peter, I think we're talking about a lot in, in the Western world is the whole um, how Muslims and non-Muslims live side by side and uh, that seems to be a problem in, in, in most Western countries but but here it seems to work Yes, uh, that, that was one of the probably first observations I did when I moved to Abu Dhabi that this con controversy that we usually see in the Western world the perception of who's Muslims and how we live together is, is totally different here everybody lives side by side uh, many re different religions even the the government here built churches for for uh, for protestants uh, christians um, temples um, so here there's no controversy living in a society in a multi-ethnic society side by side where i work there's probably 70 different nationalities um, and, and there's no criticism of, of any kind and people accept that we're all here um, living and, and, and working together. Mm. And in the building you're living in? I mean, it's, there are all kinds of nationalities. Even Emiratis um, live in the same building. So there are no, um, like in other like in Saudi, for example, where all the Western expat lives in closed compounds. Uh, here, yes, we do have villa uh, compounds where maybe there are more expats than Emiratis, but generally speaking, we all live next next door to each other. Mm. When returning to to Denmark, if you do that at one point, uh, is that something that you're, you're bringing home? Yes, I mean for me and and um, and also my, my 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 children and have learned, I think, a lot from from having the opportunity to live here. That with the right mindset, there is there, it is possible to live together with different backgrounds, different religions, etc. Even different culture. There's a lot of different cultural uh, aspect um, here in Abu Dhabi. Uh, the Emirati culture is very different, but you learn to respect it, and, and and they also acknowledge that other people are living here as well. It's it's just, um, and it I would say it's unique. It, it, a lot of other Middle East countries that don't have that same kind of, of um, uh, patience and a acceptance. Um, so I think Abu Dhabi and Dubai, in that sense, is very unique um, in many ways. 
Now it's time to pack my bags. Tomorrow I'll get on a bus that'll take me to the city where everything is biggest, best and first. Well, at least that's what I'm going to try to find out. Is Dubai really all they say it is? If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share. It literally means the world to me. Just one more thing. No, Lieutenant, there is no just one more thing. My name is Palabo, and I gotta keep moving. Goodbye. See ya. I hope you enjoyed this flashback episode. And if you did, please share it with one of your friends. There's going to be so much exciting stuff coming up in Season 7 of the Radio Vagabond, and we start that one in September. My name is Palabo, and I gotta keep moving. See ya. Produced by radioguru.co.uk.